A terrifying troll known as the Mountain King is said to be sleeping deep in the Scandinavian highlands. If the princess isn't married by the time she turns 18 is the only thing that can make him awake. Because of this tale, King Eric is frantic to marry off his daughter Princess Kristen as soon as possible. One day, Prince Frederick appears to ask Kristen to marry him. He impresses everyone with his haughty language and his numerous tales of heroic exploits. Eric gives the princess a photo of the prince in order for her to begin falling in love with him, after deciding that Kristen will wed Frederick, even if she doesn't truly want to. Even yet, Kristen defies the king's orders and flees the castle in the middle of the night, leaving a knife on the king's portrait as her sole remark. Espen is abruptly struck by Kristen's horse as he is riding through the woodland and launched into the river. Espen takes advantage of Kristen's decision to step into the water with him when she sees she's hit something to drag her under with him, forcing Kristen to repay the favor. Kristen's wit charms Espen, who tries to make friends with her. However, Kristen despises Espen's babbling and ignores him until he offers to share the food in his bag. Kristen overeats because she hasn't eaten in a while, and then thanks Espen for his generosity before leaving. Soon after, Espen returns to his family's farm. His brothers Per and Pal are not pleased to see him, because they have been working non-stop since the break of dawn, to complete their chores and make up for Espen's absence. Things only get worse when their father tells them that because Espen didn't put up the scarecrow, a vulture destroyed all of their crops, and since Espen gave Kristen everything he bought at the market, they have nothing to eat. Espen receives a reprimand from the father for not doing his share, and Per and Pal are taken hunting. Espen stays home by himself all day, tending to the fire. In the evening, he hears loud thumps and growling coming from the forest. Espen believes it to be a troll, and begins using the fire poker as a sword while acting heroically. As a result, some fiery coal is scattered throughout the house, which sparks a fire. Espen scrambles to use all the water he has to put it out, but the flame spreads swiftly leaving him with no choice but to observe. Kristen is still making her way through the forest to leave the realm when she suddenly hears the noises as well. The Mountain King has finally arrived for her. Kristen tries to flee, but she can't move quickly enough, and she soon finds herself in trouble. When Per, Pal, and their father return home the following morning, they find that the farmhouse has burned down, along with the one photo they possessed of their mother. They don't believe Espen when he attempts to explain that he heard a troll and his father refers to him as Ash Lad. When Frederick and his men show up and ask if anyone has seen Kristen, their sadness is abruptly interrupted. When Espen hesitates to respond positively to Frederick's demand for the truth, the father defends his son by saying that Espen is just an airhead. When the troll issue comes up, Frederick informs the group that the king has pledged to give the princess and half of the kingdom to whoever finds her. The father gives Per and Pal the last of his money when Frederick and his men depart instructing them to locate the princess in order to receive the reward. Espen also wants to assist, but his father refuses to give him anything and sends him away with instructions to never return. Even though his brothers think he's wasting their time, the Mountain King has already taken her, and the only way to destroy him, according to the druid, is to obtain the fabled sword Jajir which was last seen in an extremely perilous marsh. The druid gives Espen a map to the swamp because he wants him to go get it. Espen must ask nicely in order to make the image show, because at first it appears to be empty. Espen starts using the map to navigate the forest and discovers Kirsten's brooch on the ground, signaling he is headed in the right way but he is unaware that he is standing on the troll's footprint. When night falls, he establishes camp by himself and boils some herbs using the helmet he discovered. Eric, meantime, is immensely ashamed of himself for making his daughter vanish. A messenger appears out of nowhere and tells him they've discovered Kristen's horse in the woods next to a massive tooth, proving the troll abducted her. Kristen awakens the following morning to discover herself in the troll's cave. She is unable to leave since a large boulder blocking the exit is immovable. Once they are back on the road, Per and Pal find a basket of golden apples. They decide to take one apiece, but because they are so irresistible and alluring, they end up devouring them all. Per and Pal accompany the women without recognizing they are wood nymphs, when a group of women urges them to go with them at that same moment. Espen, who is nearby and is examining the map, becomes sidetracked when he observes the nymphs stealing his brothers. However, the path is blocked and doesn't reopen until Espen finds another golden apple and eats it. He then makes the decision to follow them. Once inside the nymphs' den, he discovers his brothers eating and enjoying fun with the ladies, but when Espen joins them, he experiences strange food-related visions and visions of the nymphs as being wicked. Espen sees that one nymph is trying to get him to eat more apples, and since he'd only taken a bite, he's still able to discern the truth. Espen drags his siblings away from the table and slaps them to get them to get their senses back, after pretending to eat more to get the nymph off his back. Now that Per and Pal are able to see the truth as well, they start to flee until the terrifying nymphs call them back. The boys escape the lair just in time before it closes as the nymphs pursue them and attempt to block the way to capture them. Now that they are traveling together once more, the brothers start debating whether or not mythical creatures actually exist. For example, it makes sense that no one has ever seen a troll because sunlight makes them sick. 
but this does not account for unicorns. While contemplating how to escape the cave, Kristen notices that the boulder blocking the entrance has abruptly moved. It's the troll, who scatters several animal bones for her to eat. Kristen plays along by pretending to eat because she doesn't want to enrage him. The guys decide to stop for a break after Espen picks up a ball of yarn, and Pal notices that the route is close to a town. They proceed to the local tavern to get something to eat where the waitress is serving Frederick and his men at another table, and they are all very disrespectful to her. When Frederick's men witness Espen showing his brothers the map, the prince arrives at the brothers' table right away. Since they must get married and the princess has promised a good reward, Frederick inquires about the princess. Espen argues that if Kristen truly loved Frederick, she wouldn't have fled. Per and Pal are interested in selling the map because they only need the cash to rebuild the farm. Per agrees that they should turn over the map after Frederick becomes enraged and demands it. When the waitress brings their supper, Espen rejects and hurls the bowl of hot stew in Frederick's direction. Everyone in the tavern starts a bar fight after an enraged Frederick orders his soldiers to capture the brothers. Espen is pursued by Frederick with his sword as various guys trade blows all over the area and he is only able to protect himself when the waitress passed him a rolling pin. When Espen tries to grab a spoon instead, Frederick overpowers him on top of a table and punches him again forcing him to drop the pin. As he approaches, a large man who is now enraged, grabs Frederick and throws him away, after Frederick treads on a dish of food that belongs to him. The brothers seize the opportunity to flee into the woods, but Frederick and his men pursue them and eventually catch up with them near a cliff's edge. Espen poses as if to pass up the map, but at the last second, he turns around and dives into the sea with his brothers. After a bit of swimming, the brothers arrive at land, and Per immediately reprimands Espen for refusing the money and turning the dangerous prince into an adversary. Per also believes that their family would be happier without Espen, to which Espen responds by picking a fight. Pal separates them right away, and Per snatches the map before returning to the road. Espen follows his brothers even after the taunts, only pausing to grab a bear hide. In the meantime, Kristen is picked up by the troll to get married. Kristen tries to protect herself with a piece of bone, but this is ineffective, so she uses her words to say that if she doesn't have a lovely dress, there can't be a wedding. The troll is effectively forced to depart after dropping her as a result of this. The brothers eventually reach the marsh, where they are immediately enveloped in thick fog. Espen's footwear becomes caught in the mud, but Per and Pal don't see it and continue walking until they become disoriented. When they begin to hear strange noises, which turn out to be Frederick and his men, who eventually capture the pair, they become terrified. Espen is someone else Frederick wants, but Per tells him he's dead out of respect for him. Espen, meantime, keeps exploring until he discovers the lake he had seen on the map. Without spotting the swimming moss creatures, he dives into the water, and Espen immediately locates the famous sword at the bottom. As soon as he grabs it, the creatures attack him, but after some underwater combat, Espen emerges triumphant. After a few hours, Frederick's company has exited the marsh using the map they stole from Per, and they make a pit stop in the forest. In an effort to get away, Per decides to throw some dirt at the guard to divert him. He then rushes to grab a horse, but the animal won't obey, and Per is once more apprehended. Espen also succeeds in escaping the swamp, and after sharpening his blade on a tree, he devises a strategy to rescue his brothers. When a bear unexpectedly approaches them, Frederick and the majority of his soldiers start to scream. However, the hefty guard stops the bear to show that it is actually Espen wearing a bear skin. Espen is now also taken prisoner, and Frederick maintains the sword, albeit he has not yet killed the brothers. When they reach the troll's cave, he plans to use them as bait, and Kristen will perish if she refuses to cooperate when they locate her. The troop keeps moving, only halting at night to set up camp. Pal requests food while the brothers are tied to a tree but the men throw it out of their reach just to watch them struggle. The troll is approaching them when suddenly a harsh roaring can be heard coming from the woods. Brothers are left behind as Frederick and his troops flee. Fortunately, they are able to pick up a nearby boulder and use it to cut the ropes just before the troll tears the tree off. Espen and Per bolt away right away, while Pal stops first to get the food. The three of them locate a hiding place together, but Per tosses the food away when he learns Pal brought it along to prevent the troll from smelling them. The food hits a number of trees and rocks before falling next to them in the end. In order to stop the troll from escaping, Frederick orders two of his men to fight it. However, the troll kills both of them in the process. The last of the prince's men tries to join him, but Frederick pushes him away so the troll can eat him. The prince then climbs to the top of a tree to hide. The troll decides that this is not enough and starts shaking the tree to catch the prince. After a few minutes, the brothers hear nothing but silence and wonder if they are finally allowed to leave. But thanks to the fragrance of the meal, the troll discovers them and kidnaps Pal before departing. The troll throws Pal and Frederick with Kristen when he gets back to his cave. Kristen is unimpressed by how ineffective the prince is at saving people. Pal points out that she overheard Frederick say he would kill Kristen if necessary, despite Frederick's attempts to convince her that this is all part of his plan. Furious, Kristen uses a bone to knock Frederick out, 
and just as she's ready to do the same to Pal, he intervenes and tells her all about his life, explaining that he's simply a farmer. Espen's name offers Kristen a small amount of optimism. Going back to the lads, Espen starts to cry because he feels responsible for Pal's death. Per ultimately pulls through and acknowledges that, despite his frequent complaints about Espen, he is also capable of incredible feats that no one else can and that he should never give up on his dreams. The brothers then search the forest to see what was left over from the hunt, and they are fortunate to uncover Espen's bag and the legendary sword. Additionally, there are many fireflies nearby, so they capture them in a honey jar. The fireflies in the jar serve as per in Espen's lantern, as they finally depart the forest and travel to the mountain king's den. Espen pulls out the yarn he had earlier picked up, and uses it to mark the path as they move, because the area is littered with human bones and almost labyrinthine in shape. Following some exploration, Espen enters a hole, avoids falling because the sword became impaled, and to his surprise, discovers that this hole leads to the prisoner-filled cave. Per and Espen use a rope to drag Pal, Kristen, and even Frederick from the cave, but as they are leaving, they discover the troll blocking the exit. While dozing off with the wedding gown, Kristen and the brothers successfully hop over his tail so they can safely depart, but Frederick is a moron who trips and wakes the troll. The gang bolts from the cave and considers descending the mountain, but Kristen warns them that the troll will probably catch up to them, and that they should climb up instead, because the sun is about to rise, and they can take advantage of it to their advantage. Frederick nearly falls as the mountain king starts chasing them up, but Espen can't help but be compassionate and rescues him. Frederick, who is still a twit even then, opts to hide in a hole behind some rocks rather than assist the others in combat. On top of the mountain, the troll finally catches up with them, and Espen draws his sword to meet him there. The troll easily pushes him away before he can strike the troll in the ankle, resulting in the sword falling off the edge. The troll then attacks per as he throws rocks at the beast, knocking him unconscious. Espen observes the sun is almost out and orders Kristen to divert the troll. While he thinks of something as Pal sobs over his brother's dead and begs for retribution. While Espen searches his bag for the broken mirror and rapidly elevates it, so that the sunshine reflects off of it and burns the troll, Kristen causes the troll to pursue after her. The Mountain King's body instantly turns to granite and freezes. Per then wakes up as a result of Espen and Pal checking on him because he is still alive. The troll's body collapses when Kristen strikes it, and the siblings cheer. When Frederick descends the mountain by himself and enters the woodland, he encounters the druid and describes her as hideous. The druid provides her the erroneous instructions to the town as retaliation. Eric is shocked when the three brothers, together with their daughter, arrive at his door later. Eric hesitates when the family is reunited, since he knows he gave Kristen's hand to her rescuer, but he doesn't want to enrage her once more. Eric accepts Espen's explanation that they simply need money to rebuild their farm, saving him. Espen then tells Kristen that she can wed whomever she wants and when she wants. The brothers then go back home. Espen remains behind, thinking he isn't welcome, but his father hugs him too and the two of them apologize to each other while the father hugs Per and Pal. The father tells Per that his mother would be proud of him after Per says they received the money, thanks to Espen. Espen then hands him the cash. Additionally, he says he's sorry for calling Espen Ash Lad, but Espen chooses to preserve the moniker. A few weeks later, the farm is gradually coming back together. Frequently, Kristen visits Espen, and they depart to go on dates. While still trapped in the jungle, Frederick discovers a golden apple, which makes him the nymph's next unfortunate victim. 